you're interested in how transdimensional influences shaped evolution and the Ark of the Covenant, then you're in the right place. We're joined today by paradigm shifting science and history author, Andrew Collins. Andrew can be seen on Gaia on shows like Ancient Civilizations and Deep Space as a field investigator. Andrew, thank you so much for joining us today. You have written 15 books, the latest of which is called Origins of the Gods. And I have to say you're one of our most well-respected speakers at this year's Awakening UFO and Conscious Life Expo in Blackpool. And this exclusive interview is a special part of our ongoing coverage of the Awakening UFO and Conscious Life Expo, where we're going beyond the nuts and bolts of ufology and bringing interdimensionality and consciousness into the equation. We're working in affiliation with Zohar Entertainment and Gaia, your Netflix of consciousness. Please subscribe to Gaia below. This is your library of over 9,000 videos designed to enhance your spiritual awakening. I know it has mine. I'm Kristen Gillespie. I'm your investigative conscious reporter. And uh, Andrew, I just want to dive right in, really. Thank you so much for the special taster of the exclusive material you'll be presenting at the Awakening Expo. What is your latest info on the potential ET influence on human evolution? Well, I think, Christy, the question is, right from the start, is what or who are ancient aliens? I mean, are we talking about flesh and blood extraterrestrials coming down here in uh, nuts and bolts spacecraft a long time ago and helping us to build things like the Great Pyramid, the Nazca Lines, or even Stonehenge? Um, or is there something else going on as well, something additional to what we've been you know, led to believe? I mean, back in 1968, Eric von Daniken, who obviously will be, uh, you know, the, the, the biggest and most well-known guest at this event, um, wrote an incredible book called Chariots of the Gods. And like many people, you know, I read it as a youth and was fascinated by the questions that it raised. You know, is it possible that humanity has been helped along the way by some kind of extraterrestrial source? Well, the answer to that is almost certainly yes. I mean, as early as 1963, the great astronomer and cosmologist Carl Sagan wrote an actual paper where he concluded that Earth would have been visited as much as 10,000 times, um, you know, prior to the, the present age. And he even suggested looking in the Sumerian text for evidence of these visitation. So if he said it back then, I'm quite happy to accept it now. But I think there's something else going on as well, because we're not just dealing with physical UFOs, physical aliens. I think there's something, I won't say higher, that's probably not the right word, but something much more expansive taking place. And that is that we seem to be visited by transdimensional intelligences, what we call n-dimensional beings. The n stands for n, sorry, sorry, the n stands for number, which relates to the amount of dimensions that we think are involved. And at this point in time, we don't know, that could be five, it could be 11, it could be 32, it could be more than that. All we know is that we are dealing quite possibly with intelligences with a much wider connection with a reality that's outside of our normal space time. And the evidence seems to suggest that they've been around for a very long time. We're not just talking about a few thousand years, but possibly millions of years. In other words, that they have helped the evolution of humanity since the beginning. And that quite clearly, the fruits of that, the flowers of that, is the rise of civilization at places like Gebekli Tepe in Southeast Turkey, obviously the Giza pyramids in Egypt, the Sumerian civilization, and of course, other similar high cultures all the way around the world are the result of that. And this is what I want to bring to the conference. And this is exactly what I'll be talking about. But along the way, we'll be going through places like um, the Kezem Cave in Israel. This is an incredible new site that's just been discovered where they found the earliest 
evidence anywhere in the world of shamanism. And at the same time, these people were becoming the smartest people on the planet. Is there a co you know, is, is this coincidence or it's, was something bigger going on? And clear, very clearly, clearly it was. These people were the first um, people to clearly connect with otherworldly intelligences. And I think they were giving them information. They were in touch with some of the earliest, if you were, ancient aliens. Um, but on top of that, this is the rich land of the Bible. And close by, the Ark of the Covenant was created for the first time at a place called Mount Gerizim, a site that is associated with mysterious lights, what we call UFOs today, and was the dwelling place of God himself, the God that would become the Yahweh of the Hebrew Bible. And this is very close to this cave. Were these people of the past also connecting with UFOs and having UFO encounters in the same way that we have that we are today. And what's the connection with things like quantum physics, multidimensionality, entanglement of minds? All of these are, I believe, part of a bigger picture, a one that I want to bring to the audience of Awakening Expo when we meet in June. That is absolutely fascinating, Andrew. And what about timelines as well? Time being malleable, nonlinear, um, you know, everything being kind of one big splat out now, so to speak. Does that factor into your presentation as well? Absolutely, because if there is communication going on between us and these these ancient aliens, you know, these these transdimensional beings that we're talking about, it's something that's occurring outside of normal space time the world in which we live has three dimensions of space and one of time but all the evidence seems to suggest that the way that they interact with us is through a medium known as plasma plasma is the false state of matter and theoretical physicists have predicted that its components the components of, of plasma work on with an additional dimension of space and if that's the case then it becomes the portal the doorway the gateway between this world and these higher dimensional realities and it would seem as if these intelligences these beings are able to utilize this these plasma environments these plasma constructs which we would call ufos and i'm not saying that all ufos are this not whatsoever but some of them definitely would seem to be these multi-dimensional um, objects that have intelligence and that intelligence is multi-dimensional in nature and in many ways it's been that i believe that's been connecting with us for not just thousands but millions of years but if that's the case these intelligences operate outside of normal space time so in other words if we have an encounter you know, the connection is not just there in the here and now at that moment, but it's something that is beyond that. In, a, in other words, these intelligences existed the day we were born and they will exist the day we, we, we die. In other words, their connection with us is total. And so many people, when they have UFO encounters, feel like a special connection with what they see. And they feel like they know the intelligences. They don't know why, but they feel this personal connection. And it's something that often remains with them for the rest of their life. And I think it's because these intelligences operate outside of normal space time. In other words, they're not just with us now, but they have always been with us and always will be. Us personally, we have a special connection with these intelligences, with these beings. And it's something that I believe that we need to understand and share at this great event that's coming up. When we are talking about exquisite technology here, and I'm wondering if I come, am I gonna get a personal upgrade from attending your presentation? Well, I hope so, that would be good, wouldn't it? Um, I mean, look, it's something that connects with us all. I mean, many of the people in the audience will have had personal experiences with UFOs or aliens or uh, otherworldly intelligences. And it's about trying to put it all together and moving forward from here. And where we are going 
is trying not just to understand these intelligences and what's going on, but how we can communicate with them. In other words, what is it that we need to do to make them sit up and listen and realize that the human race is actually far more intelligent than they actually give us credit. Absolutely. And going a little bit deeper into the Qasem cave in Israel, is that situated on ley lines that are somehow related to the pyramids of Giza in Egypt, by chance? Well, I mean, obviously, ley lines is a concept based on the idea that different sacred sites might be in a line and that some kind of energy may pass between them but I think we're looking at something if I may say so more profound in the sense that the geology the earth itself is key here because there are certain environments around the world that seem to have what we call a very intense geology involving the coming together of tectonic plates fault lines particular minerals such as ore, such as copper uh, and iron, and in particular certain minerals and crystals such as uh, quartz and tourmaline. And what these do is that they create electricity. And these electrical environments are the correct conditions into which UFOs can manifest. In other words, it's almost like they use this energy to manifest on our plane. And these particular locations are what we know, know as vort vortex sites or portal locations. And there are many of those around the world. At the moment, the most famous of which is the Skinwalker Ranch in Utah. And I shall be talking about this actually in my presentation and showing some very unique photographs um, because I was there in 2019 was able to absorb exactly what was going on there and to actually come out with come up with some real answers on why it's so important why it produces paranormal activity and ufo sightings on a regular basis speaking of these megalithic sites and sacred sites and portals uh sort of catalyzing or activating your own perhaps even 12 strand dna you know light body template for instance, um, has, because you've had such personal experience with so many sites, you've been there and you've, you know, actually absorbed the energies. Do you feel that's contributed to your own awakening? Um, yes, but it's been something that, that's been going on for, for a very long while. I mean, you know, I work quite a lot with psychics um, and I don't mean just random psychics. My, some of my best friends are incredibly psychically aware. and we do meditations and rituals and practices to try not just to connect with the past, but to connect with the intelligences involved with human evolution. Um, and it may be a naive thought, but we, we think that they do try and help evolve humanity in different ways. And once you're aware of that, and once you start connecting with that current of energy, then you can advance pretty quickly and I and I would say that quite a number of the ideas in my books originally begin with psychic inspiration they are then checked out double triple checked out and of course you know you evolve with your ideas as you go along but there's a lot of inspired material in those books and I think that's a good thing because people that are closed mind will only write books that uh, reflect a very materialistic world and, uh, and unless you can experience the spiritual and the psychic you can't really understand the past and our own evolution from the perspective of the ancients. Mm. I, uh, in conclusion Andrew thank you so much for that taster it's really tantalizing I can't wait to hear more I'm just wondering are you going to update us on any of your to previous extensive research around the Nephilim, the Anunnaki, the giants, the uh, the Watchers you mentioned from the Book of Enoch? Um, in all honesty, probably not, because okay. we're going to be focusing almost exclusively on the transdimensional intelligences, but everything will certainly get a mention. And, you know, it's something that I'm really looking forward to presenting. It will be my first 
uh, presentation of all this material publicly for the first time. Uh, so, you know, that I look forward to that. And much of it is in the new book, Origins of the Gods, as you mentioned earlier, which is co-authored with my colleague, uh, Greg Little. Uh, and I sincerely hope that uh, I can bring copies uh, to the audience uh, across that weekend. I mean, it's published around that time in this country, and I'm just keeping my, my hands together and praying that we will have copies of the book that weekend. I hope so. If so, will you please sign me one oh, and which, I'll be yeah. happy and to also, read And also, yes, absolutely. And I think it's important to point out that the book has a foreword by Eric von Daniken. I mean, he fully concurs with the way that we're taking the whole ancient aliens concept, which, remember, began as his own ancient astronauts idea back in the late 60s. I think that he understands that, you know, we are also looking at transdimensional intelligences in addition to any kind of flesh and blood um, you know, aliens that may have come down here in the past, that there's something else going on. And we really need to get to grips with both of these ideas, you know, the true aliens and the transdimensional beings. And that, you know, obviously he's there. So uh, it'd be a good opportunity as well that if you've got a copy of the book, to try and get him to sign it as well, of course. <laughs> as he's written the 100%. Forward. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much, Andrew. Where can people find out more about your incredible research? Yes, I've got a website, which is andrewcollins.com, all as it sounds. Um, and obviously follow me on social media. Um, and I look forward to seeing everybody across the weekend. And any questions they've got, by all means, write to me. You, there's an email uh, on the website and um, I happily take any um any inquiries. You definitely don't want to miss Andrew Collins at this year's Awakening UFO and Conscious Life Expo. I'm Kristen Gillespie, your conscious investigative reporter signing off for now in service to humanity and all sentient beings. Thank you, Andrew. See you at the event.